Hey everyone, in this video today, I'm going to be explaining the best test for Hashimoto's patients. Now that's whether you need to get diagnosed or you've already been diagnosed. So let's get into it. All right, so I have a lot of videos on Hashimoto's. Just a real quick 10 second explanation. Hashimoto's is an autoimmune thyroid condition, most common organ specific autoimmune condition, which means a lot of people have it. And it is inflammatory, and it is when you are, your immune system is attacking the inside of your thyroid gland. And usually you're attacking thyroid peroxidase or thyroid globulin. End result is usually you end up not being able to make uh, thyroid hormones, and so you become hypothyroid, right? Now, unfortunately, it averages about seven to 10 years it takes for a woman from the onset of symptoms to finally get diagnosed with Hashimoto's. So what are those symptoms? They're kind of varied, but they're things like weight gain, even though you're trying to lose weight, uh, need for excessive sleep, hair loss, uh, loss of eyebrows, kind of the outer third, depression, anxiety, uh, insomnia, joint and muscle aches, uh, constipation, uh, menstrual cycle irregularities, brain fog, right? Now you can imagine, <laughs> A lot of women get told, well, you're just stressed or you need an antidepressant. And that's why it typically takes seven to 10 years to get diagnosed. Now, if the best, if the correct tests were just done straight out of the box on lots of these women that have these symptoms, you'd be able to find out if it was Hashimoto's or not. So with that in mind, what test do you do to find out if you got Hashimoto's? Well, you do thyroid peroxidase antibodies and thyroglobulin antibodies. An antibody is just a, like a little post-it note your immune system makes to stick onto something. And you know, a few antibodies floating around to thyroid peroxidase and thyroid globulin is normal, but when you have a lot of them, it means your immune system is attacking those things, right? So that's Hashimoto's. Now, there's a little spectrum of Hashimoto's. There's euthyroid, subclinical, and kind of overt. And all the names can kind of get confusing, but what it really boils down to is this. Number one, do you have the antibodies? Number two, are your thyroid quantities normal or not normal, okay? If you're euthyroid Hashimoto's, it means you have the antibodies, but your TSH is okay and your T4 and T3 are okay. If you're subclinical Hashimoto's, it means you have the antibodies, but your TSH is elevated, but your T4 and T3 are okay. If you're overt Hashimoto's, sometimes just called hypothyroid, sometimes just called Hashimoto's, that means you have the antibodies, the TSH is elevated, and the T4 and T3 are low. If, that's, if the T TSH is elevated and the T4, T3 are low, you're going to have to take thyroid hormones almost 100% of the time because you just can't make them. Um, it's not a character flaw. It's not like a defect in you. It's just that's what happens. Autoimmune conditions do that, and Hashimoto's destroys your ability to make hormones. It creates a quantity problem. Okay, So uh, the best test to diagnose is TPO and thyroid, uh, thyroid globulin. Uh, antibodies, and then of course you got to get the TSH, the T4, and the T3. You don't really have to look at T3 uptake to diagnose that. You don't really have to look at reverse T3 to diagnose Hashimoto's. For diagnosing, that's it. Okay, now, what if you already have Hashimoto's? Okay, well, those tests are still relevant and important. Here's why. We always check antibodies if we can because antibody levels that are very high that aren't going down uh, something is going on there. Now, sometimes it's a food you're eating that's cross-reacting with thyroid peroxidase. I got a bunch of videos on that. Uh, sometimes it's just your Hashimoto's isn't regulated, right? Like you're just not doing the things to get your brand of Hashimoto's immune system regulated. I got videos on that where you can give a little, uh, give, give yourself some more education on that. Uh, TSH, T4, T3, that stuff is still important if you're taking hormones because you got to find out if you're absorbing them, you know, what the levels are. However, I would say, I mean, I'm going to get this, i probably get in trouble for saying this, but a huge number of people, I mean a huge number of people that have Hashimoto's and take the levothyroxine or the Synthroid or the Armor or whatever it is, and their numbers look good, they still feel terrible. Now, why is that? Well, it's not because the thyroid medication is wrong. I mean, they've got plenty of it floating around. What they may have is a usage problem, right? So there's basically two kinds of thyroid problems. There's a quantity problem and a usage problem. The blood test can tell you how many of the hormones are floating around, but it can't tell you if you're using them. How you feel really is the best indication of if you're using them or not. Now, whether you use them or not is the function of your thyroid hormone receptors, which are inside the nuclei of all your cells. So here's a receptor, right? Here comes a T3 that's going to dock on the receptor and then tell the DNA of that cell what to do. Problem is, those receptors can be blocked, can be blunted, can be down-regulated, so that you have normal quantities 
but you don't function like you're normal, right? You, your numbers are normal on the lab, but you still have hair loss, you still have fatigue, you still have weight gain, you still have constipation, right? You guys understand what, I'm sure you understand what I'm saying. But what would cause it? What causes those receptors to malfunction like that? Well, inflammation is the number one thing, or cytokines, right? They can blunt and block and downregulate that. Now, Hashimoto's is an inflammatory problem. So here's the, here's the double whammy of Hashimoto's. It creates quantity problems and it creates usage problems. So when we're talking about tests for people who've already been diagnosed with Hashimoto's, you still have to look at antibodies, right? You still have to look at TSH and T4. But now we're going to have to start looking for things that are sources of inflammation. And that could be a lot of things. That could be infections. That could be foods, which it often is. And sometimes it's just your immune system needs to be uh, pushed or pulled in a certain way. It needs to be tailored uh, to really uh, deal with your brand of Hashimoto's because there's this concept that, that is known as a, a phenotype, right? An immunophenotype. And that just means what is your immune system doing? And this is huge when it comes to autoimmune conditions because you can give me a hundred Hashimoto's patients that all have the antibodies, they all take medication, but what their immune system is actually doing Okay, under that generic term is individualized because they're all individual people. They all have different lives, different experiences, different exposures to toxins and chemicals and infections and foods. And you have to treat everybody as an individual. One of the things that I do to try to help me when I get into Hashimoto's cases is I use, I work through these things called the four priorities, right? And basically they're things that are super important and I want to work through them uh, and see if this is going on a particular patient. So, Number four on my priorities for Hashimoto's patient is uh, GI and liver function. You can do blood tests for that. You can do stool tests for that. Why? Because the GI tract is a huge source of inflammation, right? So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to track down inflammation. Uh, liver, there's really not functional tests for that. You just want to make sure that someone's uh, liver enzymes aren't elevated. And if they are elevated, why are they elevated? Uh, number three on this uh, priority list is energy production part one. So here um, we're going to look at things like glucose handling and hypothalam hypothalamus pituitary adrenal function. There's some tests you can do for those. Sometimes you don't even need tests to find out what's wrong. Uh, priority number two is energy production part two, which is where we're, you need to be looking at things like red blood cells. Do you have enough of them? What size are they? Uh, the nutrients associated with that, like B12 tested the correct way, folic acid, iron, uh, mitochondrial function. And then number one, of course, is your phenotype. Because if you already know you have Hashimoto's, right? Uh, I mean, let me back up for a second. It, priority number one, pretty much for everybody, is do they have an autoimmune problem? Well, in this situation, we already know the person has Hashimoto's. So what are we doing? We're not trying to find out if they have Hashimoto's. We want to find out what is their particular flavor of Hashimoto's. What is their immunophenotype? And you can do that with a, uh, a certain test called a lymphocyte map. Now, you can do all those tests, right? But the point is, is that the best tests are the ones that make the most sense for your particular situation. Because trust me, you could blow $10,000 on testing right away, okay? But, and, and the pitfall with that is if you do enough testing, you're going to find something that's wrong, but it doesn't mean it's connected to your problem. So a good doctor, an experienced doctor, is going to only order tests that make sense for your situation, right? They're not going to order tests that aren't going to give us any yield, right? They're not going to order some exotic, you know, uh, I'm not even going to get into it. They're, they're not going to order some exotic tests, but there's just no indication for it. And if they do that, uh, they're probably doing the old shotgun approach, right? They're, they're abdicating, they're giving up <laughs> their thought. And they're saying, hey, I need the test to tell me what's wrong. And, and I, I, I have a problem when people do that. I, don't, I really don't want people ordering tests. I hope you're not working with someone who does this. Uh, order tests that don't make sense, right? Okay, so that's a lot. So what I wanted to share with you today is that, yes, once you have Hashimoto's, there's a lot of other tests you need to be doing, especially if you still feel bad. If you don't know you have Hashimoto's, well, here's the couple tests you can do. Bottom line is, don't try to DIY this. You're going to drive yourself nuts. You'll waste time and money that you really don't need to waste uh, because you're going to be suffering through all of it. Just make sure you're working with someone that understands all that stuff I just talked about, right? Make sure they're working with you and understand those four priorities, understanding how Hashimoto's causes a quantity problem and a receptor problem. And if we, if you work with someone who's, who's trained in all that, uh, you're not going to have to wait seven to 10 years to get diagnosed and you won't have to wait, you know, even longer than that for someone to take you seriously and for you to finally get some relief, even though your lab numbers look good.